The three-moment equation is a single algebraic expression that relates the moment values at three consecutive points in a beam. We can use such an equation to analyze continuous beams. For example, consider this two-span beam. Let's refer to the internal moments at points A, B, and C as MA, MB, and MC, respectively. The three-moment equation for this specific beam can be written as Since in this case there is a pin at A and a roller at C, the moments at A and C equal zero. Therefore, the equation can be simplified this way. Solving this equation for the unknown moment we get, knowing MB, we can easily determine the shear force at the ends of each beam segment using the static equilibrium equations. Before I explain how the three-moment equation can be derived, let's look at another example. Consider this three-span beam shown here. The internal moments at four consecutive points, A, B, C, and D, are. In this case, we need to write two three-moment equations. We need one equation for the moments at A, B, and C, and another equation for the moments at B, C, and D. The three-moment equation for the first three points can be written as. The second three-moment equation is, and since MA equals MD equals zero, these equations become, solving them for the unknown moments we get, knowing MB and MC, we can then use the static equilibrium equations to determine the member and shear forces and support reactions. Now that we have a basic understanding of the form and function of the three-moment equation, Let's derive its general form for analyzing various beams. Consider a two-span beam segment. The moments at the three consecutive points that define the beam are labeled accordingly. In order to determine the relationship among MA, MB, and MC, we're going to use the slope deflection formulation. If you're not familiar with the slope deflection method, please review video lectures SA27 through SA33. The slope deflection equations for segment AB can be written as. These equations are written based on the assumption that counterclockwise is the positive direction as shown here. Therefore, what we have labeled as MAB in this equation equals to negative MA and MBA equals MB. Please keep in mind that the last term in each slope deflection equation is called the fixed end moment, which can be defined using the loads being applied to the beam segment. For example, if the segment is subjected to a uniformly distributed load of W over its entire length, L, then the fixed end moment value is WL squared over 12. And if the beam segment is subjected to a concentrated load of P at its midpoint, then the fixed end moment becomes PL over 8. The fixed end moment values for various loads are tabulated in most structural analysis textbooks. The slope deflection equations for segment BC can be written in a similar manner. Note that MBC equals negative MB and MCB equals MC. Having established the relationship between the member end moments from the slope deflection equations and MA, MB, and MC, we are now ready to generate the three-moment equation. According to the conditions of static equilibrium, the sum of the two moments at B must be zero. Therefore, we can write, using the slope deflection equations, we can rewrite this equation as, This equation becomes and for the third equation we get solving these equations for the unknown rotations we can determine theta a theta b and theta c in terms of the other parameters since we are not interested in the slopes in this formulation and for the sake of brevity i'm not going to write them down here but you can find them in the accompanying PDF file.
once the joint rotations are determined, we can substitute them back in the slope deflection equations in order to have the member end moments expressed in terms of MA, MC, the fixed end moments, the segment lengths, and the moments of inertia. For example, the expression for MBA is and since MBA equals MB, we can write Rewriting this equation in a more convenient form we get. This is the general form of the three-moment equation. Note the three bending moments on the left side of the equation. The equation relates these moments to the segment lengths, the moments of inertia, and the applied loads which are reflected in the fixed end moment values. Let's see how we can analyze a continuous beam using this equation. Consider this two-span beam. We're going to label the three moments MA, MB, and MC. Since the beam has a constant moment of inertia, the three-moment equation simplifies to we know lengths LAB and LBC, and we can easily determine the fixed end moments for the two segments. For the distributed load, the fixed end moments are for the concentrated load we have. Then the three-moment equation becomes Or, since the beam rests on a pin at A and a roller at C, MA and MC equal zero. Then solving this equation for MB we get, knowing MB, we are now in a position to calculate the member end shear forces using the static equilibrium equations. The relevant equations are, Solving these four equations to get the four unknowns we get. Therefore, the beam support reactions are There is an alternative three moment equation that's worth mentioning. Here is the one that we just came up with, in which the right side of the equation is expressed in terms of fixed end moments. Here's the alternative equation. Note that the two equations are identical on the left side but differ on the right side of the equality symbol. While this equation is defined in terms of fixed end moments, this one requires the use of the area under the moment diagram for each beam segment and the distance from the center of the diagram to the nearest end of the beam. More specifically, we start by assuming that each beam segment is simply supported. Then we draw the moment diagram for the segment. Let's refer to the area under the diagram for segment AB as AAB, and call the area under the moment diagram for segment BC as ABC. Further, we label the distance from the center of the left diagram to point A as X bar AB, and refer to the distance from the center of the right diagram to point C as X bar BC. AAB can be easily calculated. It equals two-thirds of the peak moment value times the length of the segment. And ABC is the area of a triangle with a height of 240 and a base of 8. Due to the symmetrical nature of the distributed load, the center of the moment area in segment AB is 5 meters to the right of point A, and the center of the moment area in segment BC is 4 meters to the left of point C. Therefore, the right side of the three-moment equation can be written as the entire equation simplifies to This is the same equation that we obtained previously using the fixed end moment formulation. So both formulations give us the same three moment equation. That is, this beam can be analyzed using either this equation or this equation. The general form of the two equations are We can derive one equation from the other via algebraic manipulation. I'm not going to do the derivation here. Rather, I'll leave it as an exercise problem for you. Let's go through another example problem. A continuous beam subjected to two concentrated loads. Since there are four support points dividing the beam into three spans, we need to write two equations. We need one equation for relating MA, MB, and MC and another equation for relating MB, MC, and MD. To write the three-moment equations, we can either use this formula or this one. 
To convince you that either formula works, I'm going to use both of them. First, we need to write a three-moment equation for segments AB and BC. Upon inspecting the beam, we can conclude that MA is zero, since there is a pin support at point A. Further, since segment AB is not subjected to any loads, the fixed end moments of the ends of the segment are zero. That is, this term and this term are zero. Also, this area is zero, since bending moment in the isolated segment AB remains zero. Therefore, we can simplify these equations like this. Focusing on this formula first for segment BC, we can calculate the fixed end moments as shown here. And since we know the segment lengths, this equation simplifies too. As for this equation, the moment diagram for the isolated segment BC is shown here. We can view the area as a combination of two right triangles. The area of the left triangle is 75 times 3. The center of the area is 4 meters to the left of point C. This area is 75 times 1, and its center is 1.33 meters to the left of C. Therefore, this equation can be written this way. Simplifying these equations, we get. As you can see, both equations yield the same relationship between the moments. For our second three-moment equation, again we start with these general equations. Since there is a roller at point D, MD equals zero. Therefore, the equations can be written as the fixed end moments for segment BC and CD are. So let's rewrite this equation as. Similarly, since we have the moment diagrams for the two isolated segments, this equation can be rewritten as. Simplifying both equations, we get. As you can see, we obtain the same three moment equation no matter which formulation we use. Our three moment equations are solving them for the unknown moments we get, knowing the internal moments at the joints of the beam, we can easily determine the member end shear forces using the static equilibrium equations. These forces are, and knowing the shear forces, we can determine the beam support reactions. We will expand our discussion on the use of the three-moment equation in the next lecture. For now, see if you can analyze the following beams using the three-moment method.